Then I'm going to call this meeting to order. Um, does the meeting get properly letters? Yes. Any public comments? Any correspondence or communications? None. Um, I will ask for the approval of minutes. Motion by Supervisor Ross, seconded by Supervisor Jones. All in favor say aye. Aye. I'm going to open the public hearing. This is a request by Mark and Amy Jankowski as owners to petition the National Resources Committee for a zoning classification change, floodplains and non floodplains in the Sherman District for Section 7.1300 of the South County Sherman and floodplains zoning ordinance to reflect the results of a fill process to the construction of new residence. Affecting the following described real estate County Belgium T12M R23E. In the northeast one quarter of Northwest one quarter section six, tax key number 02-006-05-016430, lot four C S M number 2129, volume 16-45, property address 136 Sweden 12 All right. Somebody here? Yes. Yeah. First, I want to thank Sarah Hendon for trying to so help for me. So I'm going to take the American Thank you for yourself. Good morning, everybody. You mentioned Sarah Hendon. I'll just want to do my second week because it's still on Facebook. So definitely enjoying the week so far. It's all good things. Yeah, she said a little background. I'm pretty before in the Milwaukee area. Um, I was living in Iowa the last 10 years and made my way back to the capital. Um, so this public hearing for the floodplain change, um, we were approached by County Belgium and Charlie Parks about some surface water runoff issues that they were facing. So we were in contact with um, Mark Jankowski for email with Barry, Charlie Parks, Ed and I had the County Belgium meeting to discuss what the issues with surface water were in regards to um, this floodplain issue. Um, they had asked that we postpone this until we can get a stormwater drainage plan from the landowner, um, just to ensure that the neighbor didn't have a detriment to the spill. Um, this has kind of come really short notice on us, so this is the best way I think that we can move forward with this, just to make sure that we're doing it properly with the neighbors now. <laughs> The, the main point here is depending on the post construction drainage plan, should they have to alter the fill pad there and remove material? We don't want to rezone the land and then take material out and cause an issue or increase the floodplain impact back on the property. So we thought um, delaying this by a month would uh, give enough time to sort out that problem. Mr. Chairman, point of order. Are we in the public hearing or are we in the uh, debate section of the playoff? Well, the public hearing. Okay. So I guess we'll bring back next week. Yeah, we propose to just postpone so we don't have to redo the public hearing. Um, landowner is aware that they submit us this information. They're okay with it. It's not the Belgian city. So. Okay. So I'm going to close the public hearing and then we're going to go to action item eight and then water. One Sherland floodplain zone and then um, Belgium section six. Which would have been the amendment for this this particular right. Yeah. Yeah, we have the comments house there. Oh, no comments? Okay. All right, move on to um, uh, this is smash time until we have. Okay, look, yes. oh, oh, I, I was going to uh, table this and tell us about the the action on this item. Okay, so we'll move on to the next item. Um, this is the action on 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 the on the action 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 the the feedback from the property owner had already, um, had their surveyor working on this, so I would assume the 30 day time would be enough for them to present a state plan, which we get ready to do. If not, we would come back to you and ask for postponement for an additional. I, I expect we'll be good. 
they were needed already. So they were needed. All right. I guess we're going to go with the, the April. So, uh, motion by Supervisor Ross, second by Supervisor Jones. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, Nothing new in particular from the day to day. Um, reimbursement funds and funds were trickling in. We did receive our first grant from 2023. Other than Sarah, sorry, her position really new to report. Next, I can see the university extension. So we I can do it. Well, our new community development engineer will start on Monday. I know uh, 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 is her name. So I'll make sure that she comes for the next meeting because we can have uh, interviews for her. Um, in addition to that, our regional ag educator uh, hiring uh, the position post today. Uh, we'll do that to the candidates uh, with the application but briefly. Uh, so we'll be moving forward to the different things. Um, and other than that, I don't have any uh, general uh, in the office. And do you want to get it? Sure. Yes. Still planning for camp. We're ready to open registration for adventure camp. Adventure camp is going to be amazing. Um, we are staying at English Park. <laughs> Escape room, we're going to go packing, hiking lessons, and then a professional guided kayak tour of Cape Town Park. Um, we are sleeping in tents, so that is a uh, three night, four day. And then base camp will be opening in the next couple of weeks, and that's for adventure camps for older people, which is that uh, grades seven, eight, and ninth. Base camp is both for youth and third through sixth grade. So, um, very excited about both of camp coming up. I just held last night a new project leader orientation. So we still have the volunteers joining and learning on um, making different projects. Something new that I just started this year is holding new project leader orientations. Normally, most of the trainings are trainings that um, are set forth by the state. And one of them is a volunteer preparation training that we've done. But I also like to just do a little more. So in our county, county specifically, we are doing new project leader orientation. It's not just a one-time thing. I've done several of them, just a lot of, they do it at different times. I want to make sure that we have a to follow them. Um, so that was fun. Great. It was, yeah, we invite uh, project leaders that have been project leaders for a while to meet with the new project leaders too. So we do a lot of brainstorming and sharing of ideas. So it's kind of exciting. Tonight we have another adventure camp planning meeting. So we'll do those monthly. So let's try not something we don't I'm interested in the uh, the strength of the 4-H core in uh, Osaka County. I know that COVID we took a dip, dip. We were working our way back. I'm just wondering where that, with the signups just about over now or in the middle of it, maybe? They're ongoing. We try to get the core of our signups in September, October. I really push to have that as a renewal time. But they continue to trickle in throughout the year because you can join 4-H at any time. Um, there isn't a specific, but Try to do it at the beginning of the year because projects kick off and there's more things, more opportunities throughout the year that you miss if you don't join right away. Um, although they very cyclical, they start going on the next year. Our numbers are up. So we were last year, then we were right around 417 at this time, we're at 450. So they are shooting up faster. So that's just the view we have. Our volunteers are all up. So perfect. Numbers are definitely one average, but I see them just continue that track. Thank you very much. Sure down uh, should be inspected, but also sells down. So, um, we'll move on to planning the parks. We have a action item on my land division. Rick Ritzmacher, owner in Apple County, 1615 Union and Park by South, Grafton, Wisconsin, 5304. Requesting land division approval for a minor land division by certified survey map in accordance with section 7.1400 land division requirements of the Osaki, I'm sorry, 
for the common warehouse. The property is located directly south of 1615 Greenville Parkway, town of Rapid, Missouri, along with Wisconsin, being a division of part of the southeast one quarter of the northeast one quarter and the northeast one quarter of the southeastern quarter of section 17, township 10N, range 22B, and the town of Grafton, Missouri County, Wisconsin. Parcel number 0601713001003 in the number. The total acreage to be divided plus or minus 37.912 acres. Closed minor land division is being divided with property attachment to the northern adjacent parcel 0601704003000, also owned by Kurt Sarah Shown as part of the you try it. I will just quickly highlight the, the staff report. Um, uh, the landowner, Kurt Rutmacher, is here this morning. Excuse me. Um, and uh, so I just thought I'd quickly run through highlights in the staff report and certainly any questions or other public comment. Um, so first of all, it does fall within our jurisdiction, uh, being land agent in Shoreland. Um, sorry, I'm on page uh, 58 of your packet. Um, it uh, property does contain 100 year floodplain. Um, there is gonna be a land division. And this is a, a little bit unique, although we've uh, certainly done it before in that it's both a land division and then um, a combination of parcels. So. so we're doing the handling it all at once, and we've done that before. Um, but just just so you're aware, there's land division and um, some combination of parcels all at the same time. Uh, item number seven in the staff report on which 58 of your packet, then uh, consistent with both the town of Grafton's uh, land use plan and the town of Grafton's uh, future zoning for the property that town of Grafton had taken this up uh, with uh, with the landowners. Um, as far as uh, potential uh, need for change in, changes in the zoning. Uh, also consistent with the county's comprehensive plan. Um, and uh, uh, the only other thing I wanna mention in, and which is acknowledged in the, the land division is that the village of Grafton has extraterritorial flat review here. So any land divisions within an extraterritorial flat review of an incorporated uh, municipality they also have to be a signatory approver of, of the land division, um, which is pretty much. Um, let's see, just skipping ahead to the next page in your packet, uh, there are there are some known wetlands on the property. Um, there is no additional proposed road access. It'll be off of Uleo Parkway, a town road. Um, so again, no county highway access control needed. Um, and uh, the uh, environmental, there is environmental corridor and um, they have designated the uh, shoreland boundary on the plat. And there is no navigable water on this portion of the parcel. Uh, so no need, need at this time for um, uh, any public access because uh, there is no navigable water. So on page 60, um, we're recommending approval uh, with the, the below recommended conditions. Um, and some of these are, are kind of uh, standard con conditions at the time of development. But uh, item one is just if this is further divided, obviously it would need to come back for review and approval um, from, from the county. Um, we will require uh, a DNR Army Corps sign off on the wetland determination. Determination a little bit different than the location, basically saying there are no wetlands on the parcels to be built on, which is which is great. They're avoiding all of that. Um, but we just still need a concurrence letter that says Army Corps agrees with that determination or and or DNR. Um, usually, a simple uh, email letter will do. Um, also, just we always put in a statement that the areas within the shoreland are um, under the shoreland voting ordinance, so that gets recorded. So we'll ask that that be added to the CSM simple text statement. And items uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine really are all conditions at the time of, of development and or 
uh, items that would go before the land and water department at the time of the zone permit. Um, but we like to just uh, have that up front with the land division. Um, we just know that there may be other permits required, although I don't really expect uh, from Army Corps or DNR. And um, lastly, just that uh, if you concur with approval of conditions, that uh, the approval will be good for, for 12 months from this time for final plat and meeting the conditions, unless uh, otherwise extended. And I mentioned already uh, the village of the draft means extraterritorial plat approval as well, uh, which is being developed from the CSM. So with that, um, that's really very quick comments, uh, but the landowner is here, and I don't know, we did also send out a public notice, as we always do with land divisions to replace and neighbors, so I don't know if there's any, any other additional public comment. I did not receive any, any comment on this. Um, I think it's a pretty straightforward land division, and uh, definitely landowner and their uh, uh, surveyor and stuff have done a good job on the CSM and the land divisions. Does the village of Grafton have to approve this because it's within so many miles? I'm Sarah Jacoby. I'm here from the town of Grafton. I'm the clerk. The village submitted no comments so yeah. that we take as approval traditionally. Okay. They'll sign it when Kurt gets his final copy. Okay, yeah. thanks, Sarah. Um, and that is traditional. Uh, usually it's approval if we don't hear. Um, but they do need to sign it. So they'll be able to approve it. So we move to accept the staff recommendation. The record, are we uh, on page 49? Yes. Yes. Um, it says the following qualifications uh, approve the CSM. That the four things that we're working on um, saying those have to be met. Yeah, it would be all the recommendations starting on it's it's like, conditions starting on. Page 60 of your packet, 1 through 13. Those are just the conditions that we do as part of the So those components, once those are met, you then, just have to then we can sign the final CSM. Yep. Okay. And a lot of these are, like I said, are really more at the time of development. We like to make the landowner aware of them just you know, uh, because of the, the division. We have a motion. I'll second the motion by Supervisor Ross. Seconded by Supervisor Phillips. Any other comments? All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Number two, I the Rocky Washington Land Trust Conservation Easement and Plain Lots of the Village Community. Um, thank you. Um, yeah, so. Um, for, for our discussion in our last energy meeting, um, you know, we, we took up revisions that um, our team, if you will, came for council good, and then we took your, your comments and revisions and included those. So the, the easement, the clean copy of the easement that's in the packet reflects what we did you know, as a function of your comments that she did last time. You can see. Um, I was hoping I had sent that immediately to the Land Trust for the comment. Uh, and then recently heard back that uh, it was not acceptable to them at, in this form. Um, I do not know the details of what uh, they still want to comment on. I was um, thinking that we would have those edits for this meeting. So, hence, I wanted to get it on the agenda. Um, I did not receive those detailed comments. So, I don't know where uh, they're still looking for. Additional changes or comments. I did. I did talk with them though about what you know, what action the NRC took, and the, the overall changes um, that are reflected in the current easement. So um, we we won't have any action today. Um, it'll obviously have to come back new in April um, once I do get detailed comments from the land trust back, and I can't really even speak to what those might be at this point because I haven't seen them. Um, but I did want to, you know, for your information, the clean copy, which I know you didn't have because we kind of did edits at the last meeting. So the clean copy that reflects your edits was included in today's packet. So if there's any issues with that, that would be a good place to start. You can either today or between now and the next meeting, if you can let me know 
Um, that's that's our current version, but I'll, I'll still be waiting to hear from Lance for us on um, on supplement changes that we're doing. Okay. I did receive a call from Tom Smoke, uh, president of the Utah Washington Trust, uh, about the discussion we had at NRC last night. Uh, I expressed some generalized concerns that uh, that that the easement not allow things like building a condominium on that six acre um, spot that is a, of interest in the county. Um, and and uh, I said that's certainly not the intent of uh, our reservations with the easement, but, uh, and I'm sure we can work through whatever concerns they have with regard to the federal property. Um, and, and we left it at that. So I'll be interested in, in seeing what their uh, reservations are with the uh, current draft. And I may just comment sure. quickly uh, to, to, to capture what that was, if you recall, we needed the minimal protection area, which would have meant that the easement would have covered those six acres where we need to plan for development. And I similarly had conversations prior to meeting with Tom Stolten, and he obviously expressed some concerns that we were going to, that would potentially that that would get removed. So that I'm hoping maybe there's an in between area where it would just be that we won't land divide that parcel, but that it doesn't have, you know, the, the, as you, as everybody expressed in the last energy, that doesn't have a level of detail of uh, plan approval and, and site, site development, but rather that it's the, the larger scope of, you know, this will be part of the conservation. Yeah. Yeah, I think we all have the same thing. Yeah. And I, I, I expressed the, you know, I, I don't want this to turn into some big conflagration about something that we all conceptually agree with. Uh, there's got to be some middle ground there. Uh, at the same time, we have to conduct you know, and, uh, provide our fiduciary responsibility to uh, the taxpayers who pay for that parcel uh, and, and maintain maximum flexibility, in, particularly in that area. Um, and that's not at all a comment on the strength of our partnership or the appreciation the county has in having talked about the bank trust turn that not that property over to us, frankly, in advance of this easement, which because of the timing and the grants uh, uh, requirements had to happen in front of the easement. So I think they're a little nervous that that the heart the horse and the cart are reversed here and and they would not normally have had it that way, but the circumstances of that acquisition and transfer uh, dictated it and they don't they have a responsibility to their uh, donors to make sure that that entire parcel is protected to the degree that the donations were contributed. So, so I, like I said, I, there, there's a middle ground in there, uh, and, and we just need to kind of work through what their specifics are. I think Andrew knows our, our reservations expressed last time, and, and also. I think our intent that we're going to find some middle ground that, that you know, respects what the Osaka Washington Land Trust will. And with the county. Yeah. And, and then I know it came up last time, and so Tom uh, and I discussed this too, but just, you know, how the funding pieces came together to make that acquisition possible. And that's all part of the partnership. So, again, yeah, very, very much um, joint effort. But it was acknowledged that the county was put in scholar and that it was going to be five and six acres. Um, so there was that consideration and then it was not that same. So we also want to have the flexibility to build a nice. Yeah, uh, and, and I think again, like I said at the last meeting, we're like 99% of the way there. It just, I guess, the process won't be you know, straightforward once they reduce it. So yeah, and conceptually, they don't have any problem with that. I, I think uh, I think they're concerned that easement is a legal document that extends in perpetuity, and they want to make sure that that in perpetuity piece uh, protects the land beyond the current makeup of the county that, that would be supported. So, and on the flip side, I also expressed you know the county's interest is that likewise, you know. Uh, staff and, and the county board is going to change, and that you know, again, that you know, 
the intent behind it is reflected in future writing. So that you know it becomes intent for the next. And I, again, I think everybody used that as I did it down in easement so that everybody is comfortable with that, that intent. There was a timing uh, issue, if I recall, last discussion that we really had to move this thing along, and yeah. it feels like now we're we're a little, we're a little yeah. behind the eight ball. I was definitely expecting to have this be the, the second and last time it would come to Port NRC. I had been told that uh, they were hoping that this would get to come to Port by April. Um, they might have they, they might have built in a little bit of flexibility there. Um, so I, I did let um, Stoltz know um, that you know whatever changes would have to be reviewed at the staff level including the Preparation Council, and then we'd have to come back here. So it, it'll be back to you for it in April, and, and um, you know that, that means it likely won't get to come for And what impact does that have? If nothing on our end, um, but. As I heard more so on the trust, and I think it had to do with um, finalizing the funding for the state. I think it's good that you know, we, we've had the fact that said that a future board could do something that they don't they don't like, but we also have to balance that with not handcuffing a future board to do something that would be really good for this. So we don't, uh, yeah, and, and I think one of the sticking points is that in that small parcel, uh, having what say does the Osaki Washington Land Trust have on our plan review, on our plan, any plans that we put forward as part of an open space plan or uh, old ledgers, I don't know if that fits or not. But um, so I think there's, we're, we have a really close. Um, but I, you know, I, I guess my second point is, and I don't want to go mother may I for that part or something. And we have to get this through the full board. It's not just an NRC discussion; it's you know, a full board decision. So, so I think that's a reservation. Also, and that those are things I invited you and, and other board members as well. So I did try and find a vote on on, on that parcel. So I. I think we'll get there. I just I think it's going to cause additional discussion. So do we need to table this? I, I would um or yeah, we could I guess we could postpone it to the um and, and, and it will likely come back to seven or something. I think we can postpone it till next meeting and then yeah. we have to postpone it and postpone it again. I couldn't give you enough time, but the April 6th meeting. Uh, I mean, it should have. We were we were ready to bring it here, so I'm I'm assuming I'll be sitting down with the land trust, you know, shortly after this meeting to figure out where we are and what you know what we need to do to get it to be comfortable all in April. Again, there are partner interests, and, and we want to you know, respect what we've each brought to the table. So it's just a matter of working through those you know, the, the wording that allows us to. Absolutely, it's five, it's five weeks. So I don't think it's you know, weeks before this last one. They have a whole extra weeks. Hopefully, you can identify just a quick question. Is there a mid April call for it for organization? Yeah, that'll happen. Yeah. And then we'll need to do that. This will go to the county board afterwards. They would, absolutely. So you're talking me. Potentially, if it comes back here, that's what I was just asking about the potential. Yeah, yeah. I was just asking if a, if a mid April meeting would be a possibility, and obviously, up to the chairman and the executive. So, this might be a failure to find out here. We have the period of emergency yeah. <laughs> on our behalf. Yeah. So, yes. like they did it in month. But does it does it like, make sense to give them a preview of coming attractions though in the, the next county board meeting? Um, yeah, we could do that. Sure. Yeah, if you, maybe just in your remarks you could say this is going to be coming. Yeah. 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 I don't know if we need to give it. I mean, if we don't do it in March, we're in the detail that we want it. Um, but I don't know how those things are just for the for the for the rest of the county board. I mean, I think they would they shared it with us. Point of view in terms of right? 
this, you know, this this parcel specifically. So what's what's the actual deadline that's supposed to be done by? And I don't really know from our end. We don't have an issue. So with, well, I guess actually maybe that's a good uh, good point that I should bring up. So we sent this version of the easement to all of our federal agencies, and uh, like you heard from the town of Grafton, uh, typically we don't hear anything. It, it needs approval, or we, we like a confirmation of that. So we did get confirmation from uh, both U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and Forest Service that the version of the easement met all their requirements, no issues. I did not hear back from NOAA, although that's not all that unusual. They they do either take their time or by by default, no comment. Um, I feel like I missed somebody for sure, Fish and Wildlife, NOAA. Um, but uh, regardless, uh, all the federal agencies seem to have signed up on this version so far. So we would probably, depending on the change, want to send it back to them. Um, I'm hopeful that they can, you know, react and then they're also. Uh, I guess I'll make a motion for a postponement. Right, I would make a motion to postpone this decision, this action of bill. Next, ARC. Mark second. A motion by Supervisor Ross, second by Supervisor Jones. Comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Number three, increase the revenue budget amendment to the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources Office of Great Waters Grant for fish passage activities on Silver Beach Creek and Sucker Creek. Make the recommended motion. Second. Motion by Supervisor Ross, second by Supervisor Jones. Any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Number four, increase a revenue budget amendment for a donation for winter water, winter sports recreation at Lupin County Park. Um, yeah, I can give you a little bit of background in addition to what was included in your packet. So, um, and I know I talked to the chairman about this uh, briefly as well, um, but we have a resident of Lupin County that has been interested in helping us um, fund a project at Lupin County Park. Uh, and particularly as it, uh, as it relates to winter sports, that we can be very much uh, interested in helping kind of develop the infrastructure there to support the winter sports activities. So just a quick review of that. We um, we have uh, sledding on what is affectionately known as Mule Hill at Yukon. We um, have cross-country skiing green trails around the golf course during wintertime. And then we typically have um, when ice conditions allow, we have ice skating on the open water pond that is fun. Um, and we're very, very conservative uh, because there is there is some obviously inherent um, risk uh, with skating on the open water pond, less so for the public, uh, but more so for our staff who are cleaning it with equipment, uh, removal of snow, etc. So obviously we have you know heavier equipment on the ice. So we're very um, cognizant of that. And so um, many times we don't have, you know, suitable ice conditions for that. Uh, the owner, uh, the, sorry, the, the donor, um, the landowner resident, um, originally had an interest in providing, um, I'll, I'll say a tow rope for the sliding hill so people could get up and down better. Um, but after discussions with the county insurance company, and Corporation Council um, basically arrived that there is special state statute and liabilities to the county um, for, for running something like that and very specific specific requirements um, that uh, somewhat would nullify the county recreational immunity by running there. So the decision was that that just did not make sense. I, I will say historically, we used to have a total at Hoffman Hills um, way back when, before my time, and that was taken out. I suspect it was taken out for, you know, for this liability issue. Um, but re regardless, so in talking with the, the donor further, again, very much interested in the recreation sports. He, um, so we started talking a little bit about the ice skating on the open water pond, and, and he has an interest in, you know, potentially donating towards, um, 
you know, something that might have a little bit longer uh, life of ice skating can also uh, be a little bit safer. So right now, our discussions have been around putting uh, what amounts to uh, a semi semi permanent or temporary structure for ice skating that would not require us to you know, build a water pump. Um, and so he's uh, interested in, in trying to move forward. And so I, I did say that I have this on for acceptance of the donation and that we would continue to work towards it. And obviously, anything that was decided with that donation uh, will come back to the committee as far as what the specifics are. But right now, uh, what we're looking at is a semi permanent or temporary uh, structure for ICD that would be kind of land based, if you will, as opposed to on the on the pond. Can I just, you know, there, there's some history behind this money. Yes. This, this money was originally donated to the Woods of Kingsville. You know, one of the ice skating in Kingsville is Ford Park. And originally we talked about possibly donating up to half a million dollars, but he wanted a full sheet of ice, like a, like a hockey rink. And we kind of walked on that, so we backed off on how much money he was going to give us. Finally, it, it languished in our, our the village's account for a long time. And, Came in front of the building board like last month and pretty much lambasted us. And so, one that money would go to Andrew Strauss. So, that's, that's really what it's at right now. It's not going to be. <laughs> so, there could be, there could be some additional money. <laughs> <laughs> is, there, is there any thought of like, you know, foils or anything like that? Or? Yeah. So, this was, as you expressed, Mr. Chairman. He kind of expressed to me that this could be just an initial donation. He is interested in something larger. And I told him, well, you know, it's going to depend on funding and, you know, what we're looking at scoping out for 53000 or thereabout is um, where we are now. But he, you're right. He is interested in something that is ultimately refrigerated and actually has like an open air shelter over it. He would like to see something like that. And it may mean subsequent donations to accomplish that, but we haven't committed anything, you know, beyond where we are with funding. So, uh, so like I said, anything that would subsequently happen would come before you guys. But yeah, there is, there is a long history and he's just really passionate about winter sports. He grew up in uh, uh, snowboarding and, and skiing and uh, stuff. And he is very interested in having something on the south side of county. Miquan Park works well because, frankly, from our master planning and all of our stuff, that that's kind of our you know, Ozaki County's winter sports mega park, if you will. I mean, we have uh, off a little bit of everything there, so it does make sense in that regard. And the one I can get specifics could the, could it be up by the, the golf course? I thought that was yeah, we talked about that. Uh, you know, a portion, and again, it wouldn't be a large portion, but that portion of the. Uh, if you will, a southern 25 acres, there's definitely area there, um, that, you know, for, for a skating rink or uh, there may be room also, uh, you know, approximately to where the sliding hill in the pond is too, depending on how we size and place that. Um, but there definitely is some room in there as well. Um, so yeah, I think, I think there's, there's options and I think that there is, uh, I think one good thing is there's a lot of increase in the infrastructure, both from roads and parking and, and uh, electric, uh, electrical. And um, you know, depending on where it's placed, we have the pump house already that provides irrigation to the golf course. So we have sources of water. So I think, you know, from an infrastructure standpoint, there's a lot of potential. Okay. Is that looking to our motion to do? Maybe before we even get to that motion, I'm not sure I know about this. Again, the conditions under it, it seems like with the cart and the horse and racing that can bank on this donation. Um, so we accept this money. Are there any conditions with the money? I, I mean, what's our yeah, the conditions at this time would be to go for winter sports recreation activities that we put on as a place in the packet. And so Obviously, there's a lot of detail that needs to be fleshed out, which is why I told you what the intent is here. Um, the landowner also knows, though, that you know, whatever we do here is both dependent on the approval and funding. 
Um, and so, but that that's kind of the, the so there's no paperwork that changes hands on this. There's no agreement that comes along with this, or it's just a kind of ask. You know, yeah, there, there there probably will be an MOU work out um, between us and the landowner, but he always, uh, I guess, you know, as I mean, I hate to see this, but as you know, I guess as happens with the village of Queensville, cannot meet its conditions. So this donation goes into a separate fund that is held until such time that we, you know, come to terms on what we to apply to. So um, we wouldn't spend any of it until we have both landowner and or a donor and NRC agreement on board. Right. And and you know, I, I guess I should have said, you know, what Holly, what a great generous offer and opportunity for Rosado County to expand its recreational opportunities a very generous. Uh, uh, I don't why we need to take this now if we know if we don't know. Yeah, I I my preference is actually that he he hold that until we could have plans work out and but for, for reasons you know that that he may have He's interested in, in giving us the, the money. So I need a, a formal place to, to hold that at $19 million for the whole village. So we prefer that we hold the donation. Probably is a little bit of an incentive to keep moving forward on the property. A little background. The village of Queensville, we're like 12. Okay, so do we send, send a check to the county or do we? I think it was trying to decide to send the money back to him and let him reissue a check to the county. And, and did you do that? Is the check been? I, I can't say for sure if they did, but yeah, that was the talk. The village did reach out to me about this, and I said, yeah, we're working into the process. So, yeah, that was always my, my thought is that you should do the same thing with the county. You know, if you can pull the money, but but you should accept this type. Yeah, again, that could be the potential. I've had uh, enough discussions with him to know that he's not serious about this. His contribution is so interest and I got recommendations about setting a precedent for the future as far as somebody wants to make a donation and we want to do this here, or you should do that with the money, and then we're the ones who have to maintain it. It's just it's wonderful when somebody wants to do this, but if we are committing ourselves to what that person wants at that time, I it's, it's Again, it gives me a kind of. I can answer that a little bit. I mean, first of all, we wouldn't be accepting if it didn't fit within the guidance of our of our financial planning and you know the, uh, the the both the desires and the interests that we run. So okay. I mean, if it if it didn't fit, we would we wouldn't accept it. And and also historically, we have accepted donations for targeted projects in the past, even even as recently as this stairway at Vermont. So, so this is in your future plans anyways, and it's just coming up. I'm just looking at, I mean, I don't know, next yeah. to Hawthorne Hills, there's somebody decides we need to do this and I'll give you the money, then we're going to have to do that. Again, only if this- It's in, in your plans as well. Yeah, I mean, it would start there first. So if it, you know, it's in the plans. And again, um, you know, the, the level of detail is, you know, is, is part of why this comes before you for approval because we don't have a level of detail. It's going to be a you know eight by two hundred sheet of ice and refrigerated, and that's not the level of detail. But it does fit with our goals from this one part as far as being able to support. And it does for us as I talked to the donor about. It does resolve a potential liability issue with, for us with the open water. We, we like to provide ice skating. The the pond is a challenge for us, um, and so this provides a safer way of doing that. And and that's that is interest. You know, he was interested in safer use of the sledding hill. He was interested in safer use of ice skating. So, you know, I, I think it's it's well intent, well intended, and I don't think it, it conflicts. And we have accepted we have accepted targeted donations many times in the past uh, in this in this way. Uh, same with Vermont stairway, we accepted donations in Holland for you know construction of the stairway. That's the most recent example. And I would never want to accept something like this with the thought that committing county money to this. Um, yeah, but it, it seems like there's no strings associated with this other than private uh, winter sports recreation, and that has a 
very broad term, and, and if that's all we are agreeing to, I guess I would be willing to accept it in a good faith uh, approach to uh, leveraging this private donation to things that will benefit us that are consistent with the plan. Uh, I, I wouldn't do it if there were strings attached to it. The documents outside our purview right here that uh, uh, bind us to some some future action. Uh, this goes in front of the board. Uh, yeah, with the election. I, I will say that you, you mentioned a couple of good things. I mean, we do it and, and like, like the general past private donation that we've accepted. And I'm bringing this as a separate item uh, in, in, because in regard to uh, both what it's intended for, but also just the, the amount of donation. Um, but as was said, our intent is that this could be leveraged with you know potential grant funding and stuff again with the approval of the renters to be potentially on board depending on what it is. Uh, you know, often, not often, almost always being local match this provides us the ability to do that. As I said, uh, you know, there there is the possibility of future donations in that regard. So so we we yeah I feel like we're examining the teeth of this particular horse very closely. <laughs> um, but yeah, it seems like we can have that money in hand for those purposes you just mentioned. And it's 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 like gold in the grant yeah. matching world. Yeah. Um, and and it doesn't tie us to anything. We can give it back. Right? I would make a motion to accept the donation as per the recommendation. Second. I'll second. Second. And we keep this on the contract. It's going to be a separate element. It's going to be a separate element. Because you have a plan. I mean, it's not that somebody gives you money and says you have to do this because I gave you the money. Right. And it definitely, you know, all future, uh, you know, projects in regard to this donation will come to play. It's, it's not going to be something that you just. Okay. Supervisor Ross, second by Supervisor Jones. Any comments? All favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, number five, submittal of an acceptance of the Wisconsin Department of Agriculture, Trade, and Consumer Protection Farmland Preservation Planning Grant to update the certified farmland preservation plan for Ozaki County for state schedule. I would make a recommendation to submit an acceptance. I'll second that. Uh, let me just um, okay. Second. We have a motion by the only the township of, of Belgium still that has the farmland preservation. Yeah, so that's a good question. So um the plan covers more than just the farmland preservation um zoning and grant uh, tax credit. The plan actually looks at other ways. Soil health, uh, other things that we're doing. Um, so the plan covers a broader basis of what we're doing for farmland preservation in the county. Um, but yes, specifically with regards to the state's tax credit program, only the town of Belgium is currently in. Um, if, and we'll approach the towns again, if the towns have a relevant area and have an interest that they didn't have as we went around for the first plan. Uh, there would be the possibility to add those areas back in again, approval by the, the state. Um, I don't expect that to happen, but it, you never know. So, um, but it would it would make it, make it it makes the town of Belgium eligible for those farmland credit uh, preservation credits, and they currently are in. And it also, as I mentioned, supports other activities that we're doing more agriculture countywide. Uh, that you know that aren't specifically related to that tax credit program in the state. And um, lastly, it's just it's required for us to have it, you know, to, to uh, have the common be eligible for those. Um, okay, we have a motion by Supervisor Ross, second by Supervisor Jones. All in favor say aye. All right. Aye. Motion carries. Six resolution submittal and acceptance of the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources Mollusk Health and Stewardship Taking Assistance Grant for Public Access Improvements, Wetland Restoration, and Play Bluff Cedar Gorge Nature Preserve. Um, 
for a brief, uh, brief background. So, uh, as you know, we approved uh, an application and we have a tentative approval on our coastal management grant. Uh, this is really the one in the same project, if you will. So, it's going to start on the southern third of the property as far as the both public access development and then. Um, and restoration um, consistent with what we have in draft manager plan that the land trust is also reviewed. Um, so the stewardship funds being state funds can be used to draft manage the coastal management program grant. And so that's um, that's our hope here is uh, that we'll be able to match that existing project. So it's the same same uh, scope uh, as the accepted coastal management. Right. And would serve as critical management funding. They're using a grant for mansion funds, so it's like, yeah, there's a claim or something. I love that. Yeah. We, always, we always try and do that. That's the best case scenario. It does not always work, um, but we've been very fortunate. Best case scenario. I would make the recommended motion. I'll second. Motion by Supervisor Ross, second by Supervisor Jones. You can jump in there. I <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries the aye. Number seven, resolution submittal on acceptance of the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources Mills Nelson Stewardship Local Assistance Grant for public access improvements at Little Manani River Fish Lower to the Conifer. Uh, yeah, same same grant program. We 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 have in the past submitted two grants. Uh, oftentimes, you know, we usually get one or the other. Last year, very fortunate, we got actually two stewardship grants for stuff that we submitted. Um, very competitive, but this one um, is to start providing public access at the Little Menominee Fish and Wildlife Preserve. Uh, it you know it has, um, I guess, consistent with our um, meetings and discussions with the city of Mequon too to to make progress towards that end, um, uh, and would be largely uh, provided for uh, match provided for by both um, uh, other other small private grants, uh, but largely in kind of staff time we have uh, priority projects out there already that are um, funded by grants that we can use as to match in this case. Um, as long as the uh, the timing works out, which we, we believe it will. Um, so what this largely will do is help us uh, develop the trail system. Um, we have in our master planning to have, uh, in order to facilitate that trail system, have a uh, small bridge crossway over the, the new stream um, and uh, just do some other uh, uh, development things that, that we need that we would need to do anyway. Um, kind of some uh, finding and fencing um, and um, so forth around the, the parking lot area and you know, for the property. So I like how there's that multi purpose trail along that one road. I think that's really oh, yeah. Great. Thank you for mentioning that. That, um, that. that is also in our long range plan to have. A, uh, both a little Monopoly corridor, all phase trail, but also an east west corridor trail. And so um, I know it can be frustrating at times that these get done section by section, um, but in reality, you know, that, that's a good way to, to be starting to do that. Um, but in the interim, uh, this trail, if we plan it, has a great connection to the Mequon neighborhood. Um, so that, that would also be our desire. Just to be clear, that that multi-use trail and the paving cliff is not part of this grant, but the, the planning for it oh. would be. Uh, we wouldn't wouldn't be able to have the, the funding as currently proposed, but that is part of our future um, goal. Did anybody hunt in the last year? Yes, we had several several duck hunters actually. Uh, most yeah, mostly duck hunters. I, I'm not sure that anybody that deer hunted. Although there are, there have been deer hunters in the past. Got a motion by Supervisor Jones. I will second. Second by Supervisor Rouse. Just a question of you, um, Andrew. How is attendance or participation or use of that 
And is that coming along? Is there a lot of people that, that go there or not? Um, well, a lot of roads like the north of me where yeah, nobody even knows it's there. Interesting that you, you bring that up um, because every time we're down there, we have somebody stop by and ask us when they can access the property. So to, to date, you know, we've been doing active restoration. There is no trail system. So, uh, you know, other than hunting, that's been the primary use to this point. And, you know, it's, it's stayed consistent with what it was in the past. But because there isn't a lot of public access, there isn't you know, no trail system, there isn't probably a high use yet. Although I've, I've had at least a dozen people that ironically pull over when I'm down, down there in the parking lot, they ask me what's going on and what that's going to happen. This, this would provide for you know, better access and use of the property. I think it would be much more used to the trail goes up for sure. There's a lot of neighbors too that are, are um, interested in a good way to use that property. I've had a couple of constituents reach out to me and say, well, well maybe the more accessible and people see. But... So, okay. Yeah, they, so the extent right now is it's largely the price of the property. I'm not sure I'm not sure, but... Can you just tell me offhand what's What's the distance? Like, if you would take the whole trail all the way up, whatever it is. Oh, that's a good question. So, we are calculating all our trail mileage at every park and throughout the park system. I don't know if I know that off hand, but I would say it's probably uh, it's probably at least, I'm going to say a mile and a half at least in total. Um, it, it will be a good, you know, and it's a perimeter trail so we can protect the restoration that we're done, which is also the intent, but, but allow access to the property for, for a greater. A uh, number of people in that you know, potentially this country. Yeah, that's a good thing about it. people not being there as much until the trails go up. So they're yes. trampling on stuff. And we and you know until very recently we've had it signed as such too. So we we can't oftentimes have people while we're having heavy equipment and, and restoration. So everything everything of course takes time. I guess is there a motion on that? Okay. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion approved. Um, resolution submit and accept the Wisconsin Department of Transportation Transportation Alternatives Program grant for an east west extension of the Ozaki the Urban Trail along State Highway 60. Um, yeah, so um, this, this is moving a little fast, but I want to give you a little bit of background here. Um, so the DOT has a scheduled project that they've already started design and engineering for to uh, reconstruct Highway 60 from First Avenue in the Village of Grafton out to Five Corners in the town of Cedar Road. Um, and there's a portion in the town of Grafton that's in between there as well. Um, so the DOT has that project. They've, they've had uh, a few initial local government meetings on that project, uh, and they're in the design phase. That project is intended to um, is intended to be constructed in uh, 26. Um, at, at, at that meeting from, from DOT, there was a, a lot of questions. There's, so there's partial trail systems in this, in this portion. Um, the village of Grafton built one some time ago that actually was done in conjunction with our highway department. They built a here on, on 60 by the Aurora, there's a, uh, a large boardwalk there that was constructed by our highway department for the village. So there is a section of 10-foot trail there. There's subsequently also a section of 10-foot trail in the town of, uh, sorry, town of Cedarburg, just after Five Corners. Um, and so there are, uh, you know, there was some questions from DOT as to, uh, you know, they usually look at the pedestrian facilities and upgrades to make them safe and so forth. Um, so there, there is some, uh, so that meeting there was a you know, request of the municipalities. Uh, we, have, we have to have further discussions, but there is an interest in the municipality that really uh, has uh, come down to how we call fund um, the, the pedestrian project as part of the reconstruction. And so the TAP grant came up there. This is actually special funding that is provided to the DOT. It's outside of their normal TAP grant. Uh, if, you, if you recall, we, we accepted one for the repaving the interim trail. This one is a special round of cap because it's coming out of the infrastructure bill. Um, it pairs so nicely in time that uh, you, you have the engineering design and then the funds available for construction at the same time DOT is doing a, 
the 0.6 construction of, of uh, 60, and it will provide us the local funds to uh, to make it some improvements. So connect uh, connect some of these uh, partial trails along that stretch. Uh, this would you know help us with that local share, if you will, of funding to accomplish some of those goals. Uh, we have subsequent meetings uh, scheduled with the town of Grafton, and town of Peterborough, actually the city of Peterborough as well, as a, a portion that they've annexed. So um, there's a way to go, but the deadline for the cap is coming up really quick. We want to get that in. There was not interest to, to submit this uh, and, then, and then talk further about the design. EOT is doing their project regardless. If we can sync it up, there's a lot of synergy in doing this at this time uh, for that section of trail. And as has been expressed by both communities in the past, you know, there's there's clearly an interest that they both have built portions of the trail that can now get in. So this would help fill the gaps from first avenue to the and then it starts our east west corridor, which has been in all of our long range plans for some time. Um, so the desire would be you know, they have uh has a great connection to the urban trail really graph at first avenue and it starts to build that more continuous east-west corridor uh, and we've had subsequent uh, conversations with washington county too um, so this kind of is um, some good timing and um, and also it helps helps provide what would be normally on the local municipalities uh, to come up with funding for it if they wanted to make and some of those have to happen regardless um, because of some unsafe conditions identified by the DOD. Uh, so this could help defray some of those costs also. Does, does this have anything to do with the route of the Badger? It does. This is also in the route of the Badger planning for the East West Corridor, and Highway 60 was one of those East West Corridors. So this is also consistent with that, and we hope that there would also be. Some additional funding sources available to us, um, you know, to to meet uh, our grant match as well as um, this this you know, match of the state project. So. I'm kind of I'm personally excited to see this. I I, I talked to them on there like from Sheboygan's road. Or, you know, I'm taking the foot road you know, down the highway, which I don't think they're. Yeah, and this would be um, in the right way, but. Um, separated trail is what's is what we impose. It's also what's existing there, the, the segments that are done. So it would be you know, similar in nature. There's, you know, there's one challenge that we don't anticipate that, you know, would be addressed in this funding, and that is just the, the bridge or the crossing at Cedar State. Hey, next question. Yeah. We we uh, have often done that. I mean, it's just, obviously, bridges are very expensive. Uh, there is no intent by the DOT to rebuild Cedar Creek Bridge at this time, you know, some point in the future. But um, we've done that before where, uh, you know, if there's enough space there to, to have a, a, a bike pedestrian trail. There is actually a raised sidewalk, but there's also a, a shoulder area. So this oftentimes happens with, you know, large infrastructure like bridges where, you know, they'll, they'll I don't want to say that there's a little bit of a, a pinch point if you will, because they cost the bridge. But um, we think all that can be done safely and actually DOT identified know how that would be addressed as far as their construction project too again no intent to rebuild the bridge but just that they're aware of that we're not one corner right um no for the most part the road is going to stay completely the same yeah that whatever widening they did they did in uh previous projects with the roads so trails like this are much more safer than on the paved bike lane you know i mean if you want to take your kids like say you've got five-year-old kids you want to ride their bikes you don't want them on the highway like that, so have them off the road like this. Is, is that the plan? I think I misunderstood that. Yeah, it'll be a separated okay. bike path within the right of way, though. So we're hoping you can use this the right way. So, um, so we're very, very early on with conceptual planning, but again, this is the time for the grant, and you can see the long nature of the funding. So, we get this funding now. With anticipated construction in 2026. If we miss this round, we're looking at probably 2030 before we have another opportunity. So, and it just so nicely matches with what the state is doing with that portion of 60 reconstruction. And um, everything that I've heard so far from the local municipalities is supportive of this as well. Um, as a step forward. 
uh, anticipated operational costs in maintaining this? Is there, I know we're very early in, and I like the idea. I like the, you know, strike while the iron's hot, you know, good timing. Uh, we're very good at finding grants to do maintenance and you know, the whole public works, you know, supports it sort of back and forth. Um, but we, by constructing this, we're imposing some operational maintenance costs on the county in the future. Essentially, and so something obviously that's got to get worked on the detail, but like in our trail, um, the incorporating this that way is our responsibility for maintenance and every portion. And then the uh, the county has, uh, uh, in, in case the urban has picked up the, the maintenance platform in the unincorporated area. This could be a different model. The town of Seabird already maintains a section of trail in the town of Seabird. Um, and again, in, in my mind, yes, there is the once every 20 year pretty large infrastructure cost of, you know, probably a repaving or something like that. And, but uh, our costs um, for the urban are, are fairly nominal. The urban is a much longer stretch and also has a lot more weight, uh, you know, trees and things along the right of way. Uh, I don't anticipate that as much here because of their suburban urban setting. So, um, yeah, there's probably some grass mowing that needs to occur, um, part of which is already occurring. The city of Seaver maintains the boulevard uh, in their section, the town of Seaver does maintenance. So, something we definitely took these thoughts from this guy as well, because they're going to have the same concern. Yes, there is some operational maintenance cost, uh, but again, we're providing uh, a nice east west connection and, and things that we're doing now. I think. Uh, I can't speak exactly, but it certainly will, would be less than what we invest in the urban trail right now, and um, also probably would be shared with the municipalities in that section. I think as this comes up to the county board, having some you know, comparable to what we're doing. I, is I can say, so the, um, the urban trail, we have roughly 16 miles that is county managed, and we, uh, I don't think it's consistently, but we budget about 30000 for operation maintenance of the inner trail annually. And so it's, um, what, it's like $2 a mile. So, uh, but uh, it's, it's 15 yeah, to 30 a mile. Yeah, 2000 a mile annually. Um, in this situation, though, uh, again, you can, I think you can see by the map in the, uh, in the packet that there are, Shorter stretches of unincorporated. So again, if the if the incorporated is probably more um, and and maybe even the unincorporated, i.e., the town of Seaver Town Graph, there there may be an opportunity to have that shared thing. So, I you know, two thousand a mile annually. Uh, this is uh, I forget now. I'm sure we have it in the packet. I believe it's uh, it's what two miles. I think. Um, in total, and some portions are already painting. So I, I don't I don't see it as a a, hard, a a huge operational maintenance, but there definitely is that cost. I think it's part of what you know we have in our plan to invest in. So I mean, if that comparable is accurate, it's about four thousand dollars operational maintenance a year. I mean, on the high side. Yeah, and, to, and, today, and I would say if, yes, I would say on the high side, and I would say probably comparably along the between the urban. Yeah, there's any like repairs, obviously. Yeah, there's carring, shouldering. Uh, you know the, the big costs that we're experiencing now in our urban, but it's after twenty plus years, it's thirty eight. So, so I'm, I'm going to make a motion. I was going to Take a motion by the or make a recommended motion. I'll second. By Supervisor Ross, second by Supervisor Jones. I just want to ask you like if you're grafting, it's on the south side of the road. Yeah. If you're not it's on the north side of the road. Yes. So our plan right now, we're going to select out more of the municipalities, but our plan right now would to be to repeat it on the south side of the road from First Avenue to six to five corners, which is this project. And then Five Corners intersection is also going to be rebuilt by DOT in the near future under a separate project, not the one that I was referring to, a different project they're rebuilding the Five Corners intersection. And you know, then we could incorporate, if you will, the crossover at that intersection to the north side. And so 
you know, anything future would probably stay on the north side. So we would make that that switch over at the five corners intersection, which I think makes sense. Um, we'll make sure that these values are all you know comfortable with that. There'd be obviously crosswalks there. Are there crosswalks there now? There are not. I mean, they're not, not in a good way. Um, that's part part of the way. That's part of the reason why DOC wants to rebuild it. So I think there's been talks to, to, of of making that a large roundabout, but it, it is a complicated intersection. You have to take out that part of the intersection. They just turn it over there. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. Yeah. There's been. But right away, right now, the challenge of five corners, which is why this didn't get absorbed as part of the current DOC project that's being handled separately. But they they have actually they have made some signal improvements there, but they intend to have larger improvements. So I think if, again, if we have a trail there, uh, part of DOP's operational is that they they need to accommodate for existing infrastructure. So they would they would help us with that deep, that transition part of the future project. I think that I think that makes sense in that area I mean, as a switch over and more and pay for now. Yes, yes, cross it. Yes, because there's stops out there. Yep, so it's so it's called. called. Yep, <laughs> so it could, it could actually go in through the uh, industrial park and for uh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. the intersection. Yeah. Yeah. And, and while, while uh, you know, we pick one side or the other, it may be in the future that you know, both sides hit. You know, but you know, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that. I mean, honestly, it's a much bigger cost. Um, so we have thought about it. We'll talk to Ms. Kelly about it more. Um, just the way the existing trails are now in Washington County, they're they're on the opposite side too. So there's going to have to be some. So this would be in front of the uh, county board on the 15th. If you're going to make the deadline. Uh, yeah. So, so we have actually until. So we can apply for the grant with your approval. The resolution is actually not due to DOT until summer, I think June is what they said. So we would make the application. If the county board did chose not to approve the resolution, then we would pull our application. But in this case, it doesn't usually happen. Usually we have to send a resolution with the grant application. In this case, DOT gives us a little bit of time. So we would actually have to go after the county board. Okay, we're going to call the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion approved. Number nine, the middle of acceptance of the Natural Resources Foundation of Wisconsin Quiet, Quiet Trails Grant for grant development at Loop Pond County Park. Um, again, part of our uh, our work out at Loop Pond County Park and our uh, trail development that is going to occur in there <laughs> would be the next phase. To improve the trails on that southern 25 acre parcel. Um, it's kind of consolidation, and also we did a recent wetland restoration there, so the new trail would uh, accommodate for that, improving what was an existing trail, consolidate some of the other trails and, and, and make some improvements. Um, so, small grant, but we had this in our scope of work, if you will. So, there's some uh, really some in kind. Uh, yeah, I mean, this grant would help us pay for core time to help us with, with those projects. I will make the recommended motion. Motion by supervisor Ross. I'll second. I can do it. Seconded by supervisor. Yeah. <laughs> Seconded by supervisor Joe. And this this is the area where the solar farm is going to be at one time. It is the, the proposed solar farm. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, and as you look at this, you can see some of the potential areas where that you know ice skating uh, may go either down by the the uh, um, the base of North Hill and or uh, in the front end of the 25 acre parcel. Um, our intent, we're working towards getting some funding uh, to start restoration of that grassland area. Um, there's a lot of the bases, so we want to convert that to prairie. Um, we're working we're working towards funding on that too so uh, so timing and all is a good this is part of what what our okay. all right I'll call the question all in favor say aye aye, aye. motion approved number 10 resolution application of the Wisconsin Department of Revenue for a class B intoxicating weapon permit to 
designating a concessionaire to utilize county facilities that offer those county dollars. I'll make the motion to approve. I'll second. Town of Taco doesn't have any licenses available. So you have to go this route if you don't have any. Motion by Supervisor Jobes, seconded by Supervisor Ross. Any comments? Hearing none, I'll call the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion approved. And then the discussion items. We will an update on all the bills current multi purpose maintenance building construction. Uh, yeah, actually, this will be a short update. I, we're still working through uh, phase two, as you know, we accepted the DNR grant. We're still working through the phase two change order, as I mentioned last time, for uh, for that to be in work on the downstairs portion. So I should have more detail for you at the next committee. I thought I would have it by now, but uh, subcontractors are are hard to pin down right now for bidding and, and pricing and stuff. So we're, we're working with uh, our general contractor on that. Um, I will say that our staff that has done uh, some preliminary work, though, uh, remember the portion that we were going to do in house. Uh, that work has, has started and is going well. And uh, at, at the same time, we're still finishing up the phase one work. Um, so I don't know if anybody's been out there recently, but the new metal roof is going on. Um, some of the doors went on, all the windows are in. Uh, we're starting to get the, the building sealed up. And my hope is that, you know, we can roll right from phase one into the phase two construction uh, uh, applicable to the DNR grant that they accepted. So I hope to have more detail on that phase two portion. And that meeting I'm hoping to have it with. But that's good. So far, so good. Number two update on planning parks department capital projects and ecological program projects. Yeah, the main one I wanted to mention was uh, was, was included in your packet. So we're going to start. Um, we were just at the city of Mequon to receive a project control bill permit for this project, which was approved. Um, and uh, they actually thanked us for for work in, in managing stormwater. Um, some of you have been up there. Uh, Highway permits already removed the asphalt for this section of road. We've been very, very poor shape anyway, just because of all the hauling we've done, which was part of the plan. Um, so the, the section of road has been uh, blocked off. It has been removed and we are gonna, we're starting to schedule now that we have the final permit in hand, uh, we're starting to schedule for construction of the stormwater ponds. Uh, DNR signed off on, on our design and engineering, so you can see that it. Um, it changed slightly than maybe the way back the first time. Um, we were going to have the, the additional two stormwater ponds on the south side instead of the north side, but we've, we've changed some of the configuration. And that was largely due uh, to a utility conflict that we were we thought we would be able to avoid. We were unable to avoid it. The expense to move that utility was astronomical. Um, so we did a redesign, and we think actually this could be an as good if not a better solution, we're going to be taking the water um, off to the um, northwest, if you will, um, and completing the diversion of the water. And so our, our wetland that we've stored on the south side will capture a little bit that comes off the parking lot of the south, but most of it will go through the stormwater capture. This will also be credits for the county if it's meeting our TMDL requirements. Um, or, um, uh, well, I think last, last you heard was from Andy about updating that stormwater stuff. This, this is, um, you know, goes towards those credits, if you will, or those uh, goals, targets, if you will, to meet the TMDLs. Um, so we will be starting construction uh, hopefully within a week or two here. We had some availability now, so the timing is also good and that's better. That, you refresh my memory that the trail that goes through there. Is that a trail or is that just a... Yeah, actually, no, there's a... So we put in a new wood chip trail okay. that is, um, uh, if you will, right on the property line that's from. Um, so it's it's up on top of the hill. So you'll be walking right by looking down on the stormwater wetlands. Okay. Um, and it connects the... If you go back to the, the Mequon item, you can kind of see that trail connection, but it connects the south side, the 25-acre trail network that we're going to do some work on, 
in the wood network that the, the trails in the woods that it's already done. And then it connects all the way down to uh, the main parking lot and actually beyond. So we have a, actually we're have a nice long trail system here now, and, and people have been using it a lot. Um, I, and I've heard from the neighbors also that they're very thankful about that. It's been a few years since I walked that way. But it was at the time it was a little awkward to get from the wood. Oh, yeah, that that was actually just uh, it actually wasn't even formalized or done yet. We cut it in because we were working on the Eagle Scout. So they the Eagle Scout just completed his work. So it was it's been graded in and mulched and everything. Um, it still still probably will have a, a some additional work aside from signage. We're going to probably do some additional work there, but it's largely uh, much more walkable now. Yeah, it goes right along there. So that'll be a nice addition to um, um static standpoint too with the stormwater wetlands there. Um, other than that, just uh I was out this morning to look at our you know spring creek project uh with all the rain and snow melt. It's, it's behaving very, very well. Um uh, meeting with our consultant this afternoon about some other projects, but you know, um the city uh uh, we reached out to the city just on their cost share, no problem. They're you know, our agreement there, and um, we're going to work towards that property transfer that we're working on. Uh, but they were very thankful. They said that um, they're they're very thankful. Um, they got under help from underneath the you know scrutiny on that spot, and um, it seems to be behaving really well. So fingers crossed that it'll continue to, to be that way. Um, I think the redesign is really nice call. So, so that was that's largely I think all I wanted to say on that. Yeah, that was, was there any questions? Um just place to good luck with my part with the stairs. Yeah, thanks. So um our contractor has um uh largely completed phase three now. Um it's looking good. We still need to do he needs to do a few uh touch-up items. Some, some railing, some other things, and we'll need to do a walkthrough. Our plan to open that is to uh, wait until spring, but we're hoping that spring, early summer, we'll have that open. And uh, we're also coordinating right now. As you know, I mentioned about the donations earlier. We took donations, and part of that was people could, could uh, buy a brick. And so we're actually in the process of talking to staff yesterday about uh, getting all those bricks. Uh, and so we're going to get that. And hopefully in early spring, my, our staff will be putting in that brick to be able to tap to that recognizes the donor. So we're hoping for uh, a nice ribbon cutting and opening of the staircase in spring, summer. Um, we do have a, a little ways to go. We, we are still trying to, to close the gap on funding um, with our with our donations and stuff, but we're, we're largely there. Um, we still hold a contractor also for uh kind of a three-year uh maintenance uh, contract piece but everything's going well hopefully we'll, hopefully we'll open in spring early summer well uh, people are excited about that i think very yeah and our donations have picked up again which is um really nice and yeah. so we're excited about that too by the way uh just as a note we didn't because of when the pavilion and stuff were done, uh, we didn't really get to have a formal celebration or ribbon cutting for our pavilions that were done and invested in. So our intent is to do that this summer and you know hopefully invite the county board and, and have a little uh ribbon cutting at, at you know our new pavilions and stuff. Um eventually our maintenance building will see how, how that comes along. But um, so yeah, a lot of new things uh, uh, we have this uh, kind of thing you need to put for. Okay, yes, you know, I think I've created a new and made sense to get the Love to do that with yeah, good right. stuff, yeah, for sure. I'd love to do that. I think it's like 20, 30, 40, 50 years, and I'll make it right <laughs> for sure. <Come> on. <laughs> I again just thank you and the board. Uh, and the investment is just really, um. Been so well received. Uh, we haven't had them online in a long time. And and hopefully, Cover Pitch will be open again too soon. So that they got an extension on the construction from DNR. So, yep. we're in a good way. So, we won't be yeah. a little bit of muscle or a snail. Uh, the muscle extension, yeah. The snake, too. The snake. The snake. 
We haven't seen this. We haven't seen the green snake. Doesn't it? Doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Well, it does, it does, but it's not not uh, likely in that area. Yeah. It's spotted. It, no, it's in the historical record that they screen. So uh, it it would it's pretty it would be unusual. So so the deadline was the tenth, but have they extended it to sometime in April? I think we have to. Wasn't it? Yeah, in April. In April or May. I think there's some things that we need. So anyway, with the, uh, the opening of the bridge, I'm, I'm sure our pavilion is going to get see much more use this year at Upper Bridge. Uh, we've already seen huge use at Lyonston. So I, I think that'd be great. I'd love to do a tour. Yeah, we do. We do. Yeah. 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 Is that it for that? Or... Uh, yeah, unless right. there's any other questions. I have a question just on the Highway W project uh, oh, yeah. and you know, the status of the land purchase. Yeah. So uh, a couple things have happened. Uh, we had subsequent conversations with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Grant who paid for us to apply on the restoration site. We did have a little bit of setback there. Um, when we submitted, we were subsequently told that we could not use that funding for acquisition. So that just happened. That was going to be matched to our DNR grant. So I had subsequently reached out to um, our other partners at Ducks Unlimited because uh, we have an existing NACA grant with Ducks Unlimited. Um, and then also our partners at um, the Conservation Fund and MMSD. And they are extremely supportive of that project. They will um, be able to help us with the match funding for that. So uh, that that all worked out well just within this last week or two. Um, How much do you need? Well, our DNR grant is 150, and so minimally we need 150 as match. Um, so that's working out well. The Fish and Wildlife grant has been submitted and is, uh, is working out well. And then we've subsequently uh, re-engaged kind of conversations with the landowner, which have been going well, landowners, there's one large landowner that we have uh, largely focus on right now, but um, those have been going well. At the same time, on a separate simultaneous track, Highway has been moving forward with their, their planning to acquire right away. So we basically will be acquiring non right away land for ours, and, and Highway will be taking a small trip for the right away again. We can't use our funds because of uh, we can't use our funds in this scenario of condemnation where it's more highly as it deposits. So uh, that's also moving forward together well. And um, I may have some non money for restoration. It's just that was in your back pocket. Thank you. Thank you. That, that's in your that's Andrew. Yeah, yeah. It's, this is not the uh, Andrew Strug retirement plan. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, very appreciative. Um, yes, so things are moving together well, and uh, partners are on board, and landowners are, are still talking about it. So we are hoping, and we also got some good news uh, from DNR on acceptance of our appraisal. They did the appraisal review and signed off on it. So actually, all signs are go. I had a discussion with John Edrin, too, in addition to the plan that's ongoing there, but um, you know he's hopeful about it. His sources of funding as well, um, especially for the, the next round of the infrastructure. Um, so I think we're headed in the right direction. Is that it? Do we have anything else to talk about? We do. Uh, unless there's any questions on management or financials, but um, you know, most of uh, we haven't really opened our call to other seasons yet. Okay. All right, so the next meeting is scheduled April 6th. And with that, I will I'll make a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. No, I'll see you guys next Thank you, Lisa. <laughs>